Hello everyone and welcome to another edition of a bit of an untraditional What's on My Desk. Today is untraditional because today is going to be story time along with rather watches but books on my desk. Normally, one of the things I pride myself in is uh, not plagiarizing and uh, not reading off a bunch of information that you guys may find online, but actually talking off the top of my head and today's ex episode is going to be an exception. I'm actually going to read something from a book. So listen carefully and this isn't plagiarizing because this is something that I wrote as a preface to a book called Rollick Passion one of many books that my dear friends of the Mandani family publish and who I feel are the authority on all things Rolex and probably the biggest resource of information out there when it comes to collecting Rolexes, when it comes to everything Rolex in general, as well as other brands that they've touched upon in the past. So bear with me as I read this because I think that what I wrote carries a very important message that answers a lot of the questions that you guys have always asked me in regards to how to get started about great market watch dealers. It's a question that always comes up and Great market watch dealers tend to be frowned upon. When Georgia uh, Mandani asked me to write a preface, I told her, I said, I'm going to write how I feel. I'm not going to be biased in any way, shape, or form. I'm going to tell it like it is. So take it or leave it. And she obviously took it. So uh, without further ado. Salve, mi amo Roman Sharp, il sono un commerciante di orologi di luce. Did I mention the, the Mandani family is from Genoa, Italy? So the preface is in Italian, but there's also an English version. So let me jump to the English version because my Italian is not all that great. Hello, my name is Roman Sharp and I'm a gray market watch dealer. 15 years ago, I listed a watch on eBay for $9,750. You're crazy, they said. Who's going to spend $10,000 online with you, they said. This will never work, they said. Well, where are they now? Probably left wondering what happened. How did we break past the always intimidating and stuffy watch boutiques and opened up the up until then a very exclusive and mysterious world of high-end watches to the rest of the world? Well, to be honest with you, it was not that hard. It took a digital camera, a computer, and a very big dream. Like any other industry, the internet took the watch world by storm and it happened very quickly. In a matter of three years, there were hundreds of websites and over a billion dollars in merchandise on eBay from the so-called gray market watch dealers. Some watch manufacturers fought tooth and nail to get us offline but the more they fought, the more their pieces showed up for sale. It was a revolution that could not be stopped and most companies gave up and then fight as they slowly realized this was the best thing that could happen to them. And in a matter of just a few years, the industry as a whole quadrupled in sales. They took the position of publicly discrediting us, yet highly loving us and reaping in the rewards. Fast forward to today, buying watches online has become an everyday norm. The gray market wholesale business does bigger numbers than some of the watch manufacturers. But more importantly, we changed the world of watches forever. With technology moving at the speed of light, newer, faster websites, third-party marketplaces dedicated strictly to watches, smartphones, and of course the social media, a gold Rolex is no longer a retirement watch, but a dream of a 16-year-old high school student. A Patek Philippe is no longer just a dapper millionaire's watch, but something that can be found in a video of a number one selling hip-hop artist. And a Richard Meal finds its way on a wrist of a 70-year-old retired investment banker. We, the gray market watch dealers, did this. We erased the borders that kept high-end watch industry so exclusive and opened it up to all the people, regardless of their financial status, race or religious preference, and most importantly, geographical location. We are the reason a new watch collector is born every day. We are the reason there is a multi-billion dollar secondary market for pre-owned watches and the fact that the pre-owned watches hold their value much better than they used to, as we can always find a new watch, a new home. We set trends. It's borderline shocking how we can influence the crowd by posting a wrist shot on a social media platform, making it an instant hit and in demand. A single post can be more effective than a full page ad in a major magazine. We make watch collectors, as in just a little over a decade we traded so many timepieces that we know what watches deserve to be collectible and gladly share this information with the world. We love watches and we love what we do. And nothing brings us more joy than to meet people every single day from every single part of the world that share the same love and enthusiasm for horology. Regardless, if you are a novice watch collector or a seasoned buyer, as you read this beautiful book from our very dear friends of the Mandami family, and you will find yourself catching the bug, we know your first reaction will be to go online. And for that, you can thank a great market watch dealer. I wanted to start this video by reading this preface because again, it goes back to a lot of the questions that you guys ask. What is a gray market watch dealer? Aren't they hurting the industry? Aren't they hurting the manufacturers? And the answer I believe was in my preface. The term gray market watch dealer is going to disappear and it's just simply going to be 
watch dealer regardless of the delivery method or the sales platform you decide to acquire your watch but what is on my desk that's blocking half my body these humongous books from the Mandani family right Guido Mandani who was in the publishing business uh, Georgia's father 1986 Franca Mandani uh, Guido's wife Georgia's mother gave Guido a yellow gold moon phase Rolex for his birthday he was thrilled with the watch caught the watch bug loved the watch wanted to know more about it he got out there and found very, very little information. Again, we're going back to 1986. You couldn't exactly ask Siri, Alexa, or Google this stuff, right? There was nothing out there. Guido at the time already owned a book publishing business, so naturally the idea of creating these books was born. Soon after, he published his first uh, Rolex reference book, which he co-wrote with his wife, Franca. And that's what started the Guido Mandani Editori into publishing these wonderful, wonderful reference books. But it's not the looks of these books. It's not how cool they look on your cocktail table, which they do. It's the information that's in them that makes it valuable. I'm going to fast forward to today, Georgia Mandani. She developed a serious interest in her father's watch collection She's, ever since she was a little girl. She really caught that watch book just the same. Unfortunately, her parents didn't figure all that out. I mean, Guido sold off a, a massive Rolex collection that consists of over 300 Rolexes, you know, before uh, Georgia really had to get a chance to do a, a real hands-on in a lot of these watches. But that didn't really stop her. She joined the family business. She co-authored several books, and, and most of the later books are co-authored by Georgia herself. These books come out in a multitude of different languages. Georgia herself speaks eight languages, so it makes her life a bit easier when writing these books in different languages. Hence, she translated my intro into Italian herself. And right now, uh, Georgia is the front runner of the company. There are also humongous uh, marketing machine, and this is what Georgia made the company to be today. With a huge presence all over all social media platforms, a lot of companies, including myself, use her for her marketing services. She does it worldwide. Let's talk about the books, uh, because this is what the What's On My Desk is all about, and it's somewhat difficult to show all these things. I'm gonna come back to the book in which I wrote the preface. And I'm just, I, what I did is I grabbed just a few. One is an edition of two and the other one is a single book. And uh, the first one I wanna talk about is the Rolex of Mariner, Sea Dweller Deep Sea. So as you may have guessed it, this set of two books, actually, so you will find everything and anything you need to know about the Rolex of Mariner from its very, very beginning to the very, very end. And by the way, uh, just to put some faces behind what I was talking about. Here's Franca and Guido, and here's Danielle and Georgia. The best thing that I love about these books is they're extremely detailed. The thickness of the cases, all the different markings that you'll find on a lot of these Rolexes, because you heard comments such as Mark 1, Mark 2, Mark 3, and Mark 4 dials, right? But you never really knew what did that what did that actually mean? What does that physically look like? Well, this is where you're gonna find this. And I know you're gonna say, oh, I can find a lot of this information online probably right now. Well, guess what? I don't feel that some of the information online is as reliable. And the reason for that is because it's a collection of information that people took from elsewhere and things tend to get lost in translation. This is somebody that has vast knowledge in Rolexes. This is somebody that has collected Rolexes over the year. This is somebody that has handled every single Rolex. In fact, a lot of these photos are from Guido's personal collection, so it's not something he had to get out there and find because again, he didn't have the online when he published his first book. He didn't have all that information. He's the one that put the information together. And in fact, I have heard of cases where Rolex has referred back to him for certain information when they were unsure of something, which is pretty weird if you ask me. So, for example, these Mark 1 through 4 dials I showed, this was for the 1665 Double Red, where the 1665 Great White will have different markings, and they literally show you close-ups of all the different things that are out there, along with the watch, wonderful, wonderful pictures on just about everything, and every single detail you know. In fact, if somebody brings you a watch, if you're out there buying a particular watch, you can literally take that watch, take it apart, look at every single part, bracelet, dial, markings, backing, movement, and everything else, and you can see, oh, wait a minute, this is indeed true to what it was supposed to be, and you can literally tell a fake or a watch that's been put together or had replacement parts by simply flipping through the pages of this book. It goes into great details and it even shows you old ads and it shows you the booklets and some of the stuff that this stuff came with. Look at all these dials. Seemingly all look the same, but there are so many different variations because Rolex has been around for quite a while and they've made a lots of different variations. Certificates, calendars, wallets, everything and anything that you know needs to come with that particular Rolex from that particular era, they will show you and they will tell you about, and up to the modern times. You know, here's a Rolex with a new plastic car guarantees, right? This can be an extremely essential tool to someone like myself, 
where I often refer back to these books instead of going online, because again, I feel the online information is not 100%, where this I trust 110%. Uh, this is an essential tool for any collector that's out there. And this is just an essential book to have in your library if you're a watch guy to begin with and if you're a big Rolex guy. Of course, there are other type books where they talk about the story of the Daytona, where they talk about the, the Rolex story in general. One other book that I brought was the Gold and Platinum Rolex, right? And it goes through all the gold Rolexes out there and the Platinum. A lot of these books actually came with estimates like this, with the, where they gave you some pricing. Of course, this isn't something that's extremely accurate because times change, markets change. So at the time, this was the most accurate update on the pricing of some of these Rolexes. So here's the gold and platinum book, right? And as I open this book, oh, there's Georgia again. You're gonna see Rolexes in here that you probably have never even seen in your entire life. Look at these princes, right? Uh, and this is not a Cellini, this is a Carl Booker, right? How about uh, this Rolex Carnet made for Ranchi Milano? Have you ever seen anything, anything like this? Well, I've always thought I've seen it all until I opened up the latest book and I see certain things and you're like, wow, I've never even seen this before. This is so cool. And again, attention to detail. Attention to detail is what these books are all about. If you're someone who is a collector and likes to collect vintage Rolexes, these books are indeed a must. When it comes to vintage, when it comes to vintage collecting, when it comes to vintage watches, oftentimes you can take two seemingly the same watches and that the tiniest little detail on the one watch will make one worth 50 times the value of the other just because they made a lot less of these or they made a lot less of this variation because if you go back the last 50 years, Rolex hasn't differed much, right? And most models look the same. It's just the little nuances, the little differences, the production numbers is what varies. So it's a lot of information to retain and you don't have to retain it. You can simply go back to one of these books and use them as a reference guide. I certainly do. Last, the book that I wrote a preface for was actually something different. This book was called Rolex Passion. It was actually named after George's Facebook group called Rolex Passion. This is how she started her humongous uh, marketing empire, or digital marketing empire, I should say. So she had an idea of creating a book called Rolex Passion. Yes, she did put in some kick-ass Rolexes in here, uh, from vintage to modern, don't get me wrong, with again, the same details and everything under the sun and everything you need to know about a lot of these Rolexes, Daytona, Samaritans, Explorers, etc. But at the same token, she did a section that was dedicated to her friends and people that have supported her in the past in the business. And it serves, you know, last part of the page, sort of like an advertisement page from trusted dealers. I was lucky enough to make it into that list of trusted dealers. That's her way of telling you, the consumer, to say, look, if you're going to be out there buying this stuff, buy from these guys because you can trust. You're not gonna get some kind of a put together Rolex. You're actually gonna get a good product, a product that a dealer will stand behind, which I thought was a great idea. And she also included a bunch of shots. Uh, uh, she did a shots from the web, basically a bunch of Instagram posts and Facebook posts that uh, myself and many other dealers out there uh, have sent to her over the years. I actually sold off most of these. That was my shot. I wish I had them back actually. So guys, I hope you take away two things from here. Number one, don't solely rely on the web for information, especially when it comes to detail demanding, I should say, brand as Rolex for collecting. There's lots and lots of books out there. George is not the only one that does these kind of books, but he is indeed today the most trusted source for information when it comes to this kind of stuff. Uh, and number two, uh, the whole story that I read you from the preface of this book in regards to the great market watch dealers. I hope that changes your perspective just a little bit on what a great market watch dealer is. Uh, you can find these books on mandaniweb.com. I will link everything below again. This is somewhat of a shameless plug for my friend George, and that's just an episode of YouTube. We sell these on our website as well. They're sold on Amazon, they're sold, they're sold everywhere. These are very popular books. Most of you probably even know these books and oh, even own some of them. Check out her latest Daytona book that she just put out. It's a great book. I actually saw it at the last IWJG show, and I did an interview with Georgia there where she talks about her books, herself in general, and her latest book. Uh, hope you like a bit of a different twist on what's on my desk. You know, we're pushing 100 episodes. I don't want these episodes to get stale. This is what helped me start my YouTube channel. What's on my desk is that first pilot episode that made my YouTube channel happen. So I'm going to try to keep things uh, fun and exciting and different in this series. As always, like, share, subscribe. Do all those wonderful things that you do that helps my channel grow on a daily basis. And I'll see you guys next week for more watch reviews and other videos and perhaps some more book reviews. Thanks.